Disclaimer, the comments made in this video are intended solely for entertainment purposes and are not intended to harm or offend anyone. Feminism has been a powerful force for women's rights, achieving major victories like voting equality and workplace protections. But now, it has spawned a breed of activists that are detached from reality. Supporters claim feminism is still crucial for addressing ongoing inequalities, while others argue it has gone too far. But what's really going on beneath the surface? You guys loved the last part of this. So today I've compiled two more debates where modern delusional feminists get destroyed instantly. Starting with the time when a man tried schooling a mother on abortion rights, only to make a statement so shocking it's left even pro-choice advocates stunned. Just watch. Here's the thing, even if it was a human being entirely, what is the issue with getting rid of it? What's the issue with killing another human being? No, I'm saying what's the issue with getting rid of something that isn't contributing to any sort of economy, isn't contributing to any sort of urban population. The only thing that it's actually doing is leaching sorts of nutrients and resources. Go ahead, paint me a villain. But if you want to play this moral line, I feel no issue. So you believe that it. a person's value I is believe only that a dependent upon, I'm trying to understand your worldview. I'm, I'm saying that it's if only you, dependent on what well, they give to okay, society. I'm, That's what you just said. Yeah. So they're not finished. Well, That's what you believe? Well, first of all, there's a couple of different things. You're not about to just shorten my argument down and strong arm it to where you can easily rebut no, it. No, I'm just trying We're to make not it easier to understand. Do. If it's difficult to understand, then you can read a little more. That's okay. But one of the major things that you need to sort of get at is the fact that having increased access to abortions saves more people. End of discussion. Look at the 2018 versus 2021. That, that is, what oh, wait, statistics are you citing, okay, sir? 20, Show me your sources. 2016 versus 2020 versus 2019, Ireland and Northern Ireland, when Ireland actually went strictly into a pro-life routine and started to outlaw different versions of abortion altogether, more women were getting access to undocumented abortions, more women were getting access to riskier abortions, more women were dying in childbirth and were dying in the process of trying to abort their children. A study just came out last week from Poland that's banned abortions that has zero maternal mortality rates. Um, out so of I curiosity, would argue a ban on abortion what, what, what saves was more the, lives because what was it the certainly bandwidth? saves the lives of children. Okay, first of all, what was the bandwidth of this study? Second of all, what was the political affiliation of the people that posted it? Because I'm pretty sure that the World it Health... It was the Prime Minister. Okay, so the World Health... It was like the government. So the government has less of a political affiliation than the World Health Organization and institutionally mandated sources of data. Oh, I wouldn't trust the World Health Organization for anything. They already lied to us once. Like, the World Health Organization isn't elected by anybody. Who elects the World Health Organization? Why do elections and democracy people, have to be put into well, place in order all, for you to like actually have... Wait, I have a because you want to elect officials can... who are accountable to our laws and upholding truth and can be held accountable. So I have a question. The World Health Organization, I would never point to as That's any right. other studies as being, Hi. you know, statistically better than a governmental study. We've all heard pro-choice arguments before, but this man's reasoning goes beyond the usual talking points. His abortion logic is that women should be allowed to get rid of a child because it's not contributing to society. Is he actually serious? I don't know about the child, but this man isn't contributing to society in any way, shape, or form. But this debate keeps getting wild. Watch close how does removing abortion help women protect themselves from entering another domestic economy that they just got out of? Because the first three waves of are feminism- you, Are you assuming that women can't enter the domestic economy because they're pregnant or parenting? Because that's an incredibly- Where did I make that assumption? That's what you just said. No, I said- We need to help women so, no, so they can enter the domestic Kristen, economy. No, please do not, please do not try to retake my words or anything. I said, how do you suppose that banning abortion mm -hmm. will help protect women from entering back into a domestic economy that the first three waves of feminism were entirely about trying to give them an option to step out of. There's nothing wrong with a woman entering a domestic sphere or entering the domestic labor if that is her choice. But when you remove abortion, what you are doing is you are removing one of the legal institutions within which women can either choose to enter that domestic sphere or be forced into it. I feel like it's also especially important to notice that abortion laws have become increasingly more strict in this country as birth rates are going down, as our future economy is starting to get a little bit more worried because we have less children. It seems like removing abortion ways or removing ways for women to get access to abortion is a way to force women to engage in births okay. in order to power a future so economy. Wait, are you saying that I'm you saying want that more births or less births? I'm saying that you need to have abortion as a legal option that women can take in order to prevent the government from forcing them into a position where they are the byproducts of more manual labor. Okay. 
Right. Do you think there's too many births of babies or too few births of babies in our economy? That doesn't matter. Well, that. No, it doesn't matter because what abortion does is it offers somebody an opportunity right. to be able to right. enter that birth. I or will not. talk about feminism because I would say argue it was the first and second waves of feminism. But what about the rights of a whole group of marginalized human beings in the womb? That are, a million of them are killed. Three hundred eighty thousand are killed by. Before parents. you try to. Do their rights not count? Kristen, before you try to engage in a logical deflection, we both know you're smart enough to respond to my point. I so said, please I just said do I so. Would respond to your point. I'm just no, you're you, engaging in a deflection you when you're asking another D&D? question. When you're asking a question, instead of responding to how do you suppose that woman will be able to okay, legally well, protect themselves? I think your argument um, is sort of misogynistic because you're assuming that women aren't strong enough to be pregnant to achieve their educational goals, to achieve their career goals, and also be a mother. As a working mother, I get highly offended. The feminist Kristen and me gets very pissed off that you would insinuate that I can't run a $20 million organization, have 100 staff reporting to me, and at the same time, be a good mother to four of my children. Kristen, That's are the you not, would you not agree? That's no, the insinuation that we're going to force women Kristen, into the domestic first, economy Kristen, if they don't have access to abortion. Well, I'm think saying that's that... Under, you're okay. underselling women is what you're first doing, of all, You're first, saying women, most women aren't capable of that. I'm answering your question. If you let me continue to talk this, I'll continue to talk. You think most women are capable of running a $20 million organ, dollar organization when most people in yes. general don't have $20 million? I think, you're an I exceptional think women, person. You are using your own exceptional certificates <laughs> in order to... With $20 million? Yeah, I mean, I, I, well, I think it's... Okay, it's I, making, I think you just undersold... Like all these women that somehow I'm this special woman that can do I'm something. I'm saying that any other, in the, Has anyone else who's a woman who heard that and said, what the f*** is he talking Kristen, about? Kristen. Because that's what I'm thinking about. Kristen, I'm saying... You're going to have to edit that out, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying that if you have $20 million, you're already at a point that is far beyond the means of most people. I started at zero dollars. Yes, and do, you have demonstrated... Do you demonst- not believe that the women here are listening to you I'm saying are that- not capable of starting their own organization or business with zero dollars and growing their business to $20 million while being a mother of four children? I'm saying I don't think most people needs. are capable of that, period. Otherwise, most people would have Sorry, $20 ladies. million. Dollars. I argue for you. Sorry. I think your point, <laughs> my though, point is, is wrong. My point is that abortion... That, w- that I'm somehow this exceptional woman and that only rare people can run organizations and fundraise $20 million from scratch and also be a mother. I think women are strong enough and capable of that. Kristen's counter argument shatters her opponent's logic, exposing the flaws in his view that motherhood oppresses women. Scrambling to respond, he dismisses her as exceptional, conveniently ignoring her climb from zero to success. But this heated debate is far from over. How is removing a boy? Because you're removing an opportunity. You're removing. No, no, Kristen, because you're removing an opportunity. That's the same thing as trying to argue. Oh, these people are. Opportunity to do what? Opportunity to abort. To kill another. If that's what you want to call it, sure. I don't give a. Yeah, I don't think anybody should have the right to have the opportunity to kill an innocent human being. I think that is a moral wrong because this human being is a So member instead, of you want to give people no le- she became So she. instead, you want to give a group of people who have already been exposed to the patriarchy no legal protection from the same principle that the patriarchy has always enforced, which is forcing them into the domestic economy. By removing abortion, you are making it far easier to force women into the domestic economy. Do you have any sources for this? Do you have any quotes about, I don't know, GOP members of Congress who vote for abortion bans saying, I want to force women into the domestic economy? Because I don't see any facts for what you just said. What are your facts? What about the woman in the womb? Is is the mother of the patriarchy then? Is you, already, patriarchy you already, the like, I feel like we've had this conversation enough. Because I, I don't give a f- about anyone in the womb. I'm talking about the people that are here. There's the video. I don't give a f- about anyone in the womb. This is our whole point in the pro-life movement, sir, is that children in the womb, little boys and little girls in the womb have an equal right to life as you and I do. You're precious. I'm precious. They are precious. 
all of us are equally valuable because we're human beings. But when you remove abortion from being something those women in the womb can access in their future, then you are putting them in a society that implicitly gives them less opportunities than the little boys you're trying to protect. Well, I'm trying to protect little girls too. But what you're doing so- Wait, no, so you're doing, you're protecting the little girls in the womb? From being, from for, being aborted, from those- But you're protecting those little girls at the them. expense of giving them the same opportunities as those little boys. Because one of the, like, one of the aspects of masculinity is the fact that we don't have to worry about aborting a child because it's never in yeah, our body. Yeah, because you're not as special as women. Yeah, well, no, our, I, my body can do three things, your body can't. I can gestate, I can menstruate, and I can lactate. Her. We're superheroes as women. The passion for abortion rights often comes from those who've never raised a child. It's a debate that misses a simple point. Responsible choices prevent unwanted pregnancies. There's a heartbreaking side to this issue that's rarely discussed. While researching, I found a father's confession that'll make you question everything you've just heard um before i get into my my question i just wanted to uh say my daughter's name is clementine she was five months along when she was aborted in new jersey my daughter was healthy i begged her mother not to go through with the abortion for five months we went back and forth i don't hate my ex i love her and I'm working on forgiving her. She was confused. She was uncertain. And she had doubts. Mike Tyson has doubts before he gets into a ring. This was an option. And she took that option. And she regrets it now. Why do you think... And this is just a thought that just came into my head. Why do you think that people dehumanize... My Clementine. Why wasn't she human enough for people to help me mourn? Why wasn't she human enough for people to talk about? My mother was given birth too prematurely at five months. My daughter was five months. I didn't get to say goodbye to my daughter. I didn't know about the abortion until after it happened. I begged her not to do the appointment. She told me that she canceled it. My daughter was five months and she was ripped apart. My daughter doesn't get a funeral. My daughter doesn't get respect. As my friend asked, yeah, medical testing on a healthy baby, why? My girlfriend didn't pay for the abortion. The clinic did. How much money did they make off of my daughter's body? How many other babies did the doctor kill since she's been dead? This has been a month and three days. This happened March 12th and 13th. My daughter was conceived October 25th. She was supposed to be born July 20th. My daughter was a person. My daughter is an angel. And I pray for her every single day. I talk to her. I still feel like she's there. I feel like on July 20th, my daughter is gonna be there. She doesn't get a funeral. I have her sonogram picture the first time I heard her heartbeat. And I bring this up to people and I say, well, she had a heartbeat. Wasn't she a person? And I'm being told she's a fetus. My daughter not only matters, but I do not want my daughter to be forgotten. I want my daughter's story to be talked about. I want her to be remembered. She wasn't just a fetus. And yeah, maybe, maybe she was just a 10%. Maybe. But she was a lot more than that for me. There are no words for this man's pain. This is the face of abortion. If the babies needed a face or a voice, this man is it. But other than a man who fights over something he has never experienced before, we have this woman who has the dumbest pro-abortion argument you'll ever hear. Do you believe that organ donation should be mandatory? I do not. You do not. Okay, so if you believe that even a dead person has the right to bodily autonomy, even if that dead person's organs could save up to eight lives, and yet you also believe that women should be legally mandated to sacrifice their bodily autonomy in order to save the life of a fetus. Uh, by your own logic, a corpse has more right to bodily autonomy than a living, breathing woman. Well, you, you imposed upon me a liberal view that I do not hold, which is mm -hmm. that my views of abortion come from some sense of bodily autonomy. I'm not a huge 
autonomy guy to begin with. I don't think that I own my body. I think my body is sort of a gift, you know, and I have obligations to my creator. Uh, the reason that I don't support mandatory organ donation is not because of some liberal conception of autonomy or something. It's, it's because that's not what your organs are for. Your, your organs are for you. Your lungs are to bring oxygen to your blood. Your heart is to pump blood around your body. Your liver is to take care of what I will probably do later on at the bar after this speech, <laughs> and so on and so forth. Uh, my organs are not for you. Your organs are not for me. So you, you can give an organ donation, that, and that can be a lovely thing to do, but you aren't obligated for it because things are known largely by what they are for. Um, huh. Okay. Uh, it sounded like you were just going to be anti-organ donation for a second. I was like, that's weird. No, um, no. I'm but, just, I'm, I'm, but I am against, uh, you know, going in and stealing people's organs. I think that would be quite wrong. Uh-huh. Uh, stealing from a person who isn't alive, which gives well, just, them well, Yeah, I, I think right, desecrating bodies is pretty bad, right you know, or like digging up graves is bad too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh... If you don't believe that withholding resources like life-saving organs, which you would die about without if you have organ failure, if you don't believe that withholding resources like that means that you're killing a person, would you be pro-cutting the umbilical cord rather than removing a fetus so that the fetus would no longer be able to grow without the nutrients it needs? Uh, I'm um, a, I'm a fr oh, no, I think it would be wrong for a mother to kill her child. So I, I don't so, view I don't view uh, my organs say as resources as you've put it in a kind of like materialist liberal they way. Are. I, yeah, I, I I kind of think of them as my organs, you know. And I think of my body as like me, my body, and I think of me as a person, not just a big sack of flesh that can be chopped up for the pleasure of some liberal technocrat. Uh, call me old-fashioned, I guess. Uh, but but then you turn to this example and you say, well, okay, what about cutting the umbilical cord of, a, I mean, eventually you do cut the umbilical cord when, when the baby comes out, but uh, what about cutting the umbilical cord or otherwise killing the baby? I think that would uh, be quite wrong to do because um, your, your baby is not for your killing. <laughs> you know, that's, that, uh, your, your baby is, is not um, uh, justifying some kind of murder. That, that's, that was the topic of our, of our uh, discussion tonight. And uh, f furthermore, a woman's womb, which is another organ that you haven't brought up, is, has a purpose too. And the, the purpose of the woman's womb is to grow a baby. And the baby is not just you know, a clump of cells or a, a, a parasite or, or a, any other dehumanizing way that the liberals talk about it. The baby is your baby. And when, when mothers kill their babies, that's contrary to reason and contrary to nature. Um, so back to what I was saying, you kind of, you love doing this thing where you go off about some nonsense that isn't what the original question was about. Logic, um, yes, yeah, but, I know, I do occasionally, <laughs> logic, do logic occasionally apply entirely that. entirely unrelated to what I was saying in the first place, but, uh, uh, What were you saying? Um, Perhaps I misunderstood. I thought I understood. You misunderstood. You For now, she thinks she is winning the argument, but don't count Michael Knowles out just yet. He's about to drop a bombshell that'll turn this debate on its head. Watch as he makes a point so outrageous, it leaves this woman completely lost for words. Um, so with Holding resources. <laughs> right. Without, yeah, I, I suppose I just, which I just don't. someone will die. Yeah, I, when I you suppose have I... organ failure, not having an organ donor kills you. Surprise. Um, so withholding resources from them, that isn't killing, that isn't wrong. But withholding resources from a growing fetus, somehow that's different. And the, yeah. the well, way as you I tried make to that leap, so I'm, I'm getting confused there. Uh, you are getting confused. Uh, as, I, as I tried to explain, you, you are uh, beginning with a premise that all of our organs are just undifferentiated resources to which any of us might be entitled. And that's an, a novel view. It's a view held by, I guess, some rather extreme liberals or materialists, but it's not a view held by me. I don't think that it's all just undifferentiated flesh. I think that uh, things like organs have both form and matter. So there's the matter, there's the flesh, there's the stuff, but then there's the form, which, which tells you about what that thing is. And so uh, my liver might look a lot like your liver, but they're different livers. 
One's mine, for instance, and one is yours. So you don't have a right to mine, and I don't have a right to yours, because your liver is for you, and my liver is for me. And we, we all know this, and we all act that way. That's why you're not coming up here and attacking me and ripping my kidneys out and selling it on a market in Wuhan or something like that. But, but we pretend that we don't uh, believe these things because it helps to advance an argument which is totally indefensible and unnatural, uh, namely that we ought to kill a baby or something like that. So your organs are for you and you alone. Yeah. You get to decide what to do with them. But a woman doesn't get that choice about her womb, about her ovaries. Well, the baby is not uterus. an organ of no, hers. The so baby is an individual human being. You get to make choices about your internal organs, but a living, breathing woman does not. Well, the, okay, I understand. No, that. I don't you. think you do understand because <laughs> I, I don't think you understand very well at all, unfortunately, because you're suggesting that the baby is a, an organ of the woman, which is preposterous. Obviously, you know the baby is differentiated from organs by its DNA, by how it will develop, by, I don't know, I don't think she's listening to the rest of my answer. <laughs> right. We're not worth listening to, Matt! <laughs> Matt! <laughs> she walked away because she realized as soon as the words came out of her mouth, she had lost the entire argument. And the fact that she prepared for this and still got completely destroyed is hilarious. I'm trying to hit 100k subscribers by the end of this year. If you want to fight this woke culture, make sure you've subscribed for more such videos.